Now, in the world of the PE exam, we're normally dealing with what's referred to as gauge pressure. Okay? But there's another pressure. It's called absolute pressure, or piece of absolute. And if you were to take your gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure, this 14.7, you know, PSI at at sea level, uh, you could answer a question on what is the absolute pressure. But typically, we're dealing with, like this example shows, the pressure where an open reservoir is open to the atmosphere. That pressure is equal to zero, and then we're just dealing with the gauge pressure. Okay, this concept of fluid height equivalence. Very important environmental engineering conversion is 2.31 feet of water is equal to one pound per square inch of pressure. Okay, now, as you might know, if you were to take the 2.31 feet and work through the units, it would come up with 144 square inches in a square foot divided by our specific weight of water, all right, also termed a little further down the density or unit weight, and that's the 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. So I'm just going to put the numeric values. So the 2.31 is 144 divided by 62.4. Okay, continuing on this page. And we're going to take a look at this example here. Uh, density and unit weight. There's the properties of water table that is from your F of the PE reference handbook that I've put at the top of the next page, three. The density, as you see, is in pounds per cubic feet. It's also the same units for unit weight or what's referred to also as specific weight. Okay, so here's the Greek symbol for density, and I'm going to answer the question in the chat area soon. And here's the Greek symbol for specific weight right there. And we're going to see that, of course, as part of the Bernoulli energy equation, specific weight. Okay, let's go back up and take a look at this example. Okay, as I clear off the markups. Okay, so we see this view here. Let's bring it up a little bit. All right, so we have a Z value, right, of 100 feet. And what's the fluid height equivalent? If we were to have a gauge and measure what is the pressure, right here at this point, which is 100 feet below this water surface elevation, it would be 43.3 PSI. Okay, and that's using that conversion of 2.31 feet per PSI. All right, so from a nothing's moving standpoint, right, to answer the question in the chat area, okay, that is the, what would be the static pressure. You're just measuring that pressure, 43.3 PSI. Okay, and the conversion again is 2.31 feet per PSI. Okay, the bottom of this page, we're going to talk about specific gravity. Specific gravity is important because you have to account for the mass of the fluid that you're going to be moving, for instance, with a pump, right? So if you design a pumping system for water, but you're actually pumping some other chemical that has a greater mass than water or greater density, then you have to account for that density difference in your equations. The specific gravity of a fluid is the density of that particular fluid or liquid you're measuring divided by the density of water. We know the density of water at approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit is 62.4 pounds per cubic feet, and we see that right up in through this explanation up in here. And we'll see equations that work in either the, what is the specific density, specific weight or unit weight of a particular fluid to account for its mass 
in those hydraulic equations. And some equations, as you might recall, for horsepower, specific gravity is directly right in there in the equation. Okay, so that's to account for the mass difference of your fluid. Last comment here on this particular fluid properties page, viscosity, measure of the fluid's resistance to flow when acted upon by an external force. Two types of viscosity, they're both listed out in the properties of water table, which is around page three here of the refresher notes. It is the absolute dynamic viscosity, and it's the kinematic viscosity. Kinematic viscosity is an equation, which is the absolute dynamic viscosity divided by the fluid's density. Kinematic viscosity is used in the calculation for the Reynolds number. Now we need to be careful with the Greek symbol here for kinematic viscosity. It's new and it's similar to an italicized V. In the equation for the Reynolds number we're going to talk about in a little bit, it has velocity in the numerator and this kinematic viscosity in the denominator. So you've got to keep those lowercase v components in place to make sure you get the right answer. 